let me introduce myself. So I'm Lynn Nakamura Tengan. I'm with the Cooperative Extension with the University of Hawaii. And I'm going to talk real quickly about some key points around good agricultural practices specific to aquaponic production. There's a lot of um, connections with what Luis was talking about and good agricultural practices. So some things may sound like we've, did we just talk about that? Okay, so let's move ahead. Oh, got through the introduction. So one of the key things about good agricultural practices, so again, it's voluntary and it's focused on minimizing microbial contamination. And it's really based on science-based risk reduction guidelines. And the key word here is it's guidelines. It's not mandatory like what Louisa is referring to when she talks about FISMA. It does include a food safety plan, and basically that describes a description of your farm operation. And it also will include some of the records that you keep to document and provide evidence that you are using these good agricultural practices. And for many of the third party audits, they are looking at good agricultural practices as one of their founding principles. Okay, so I'm, going, I'm not gonna go through all of this, but these are some of the key areas that we're looking at when we talk about good agricultural practices. Not so much land use, but when we talk about land use, we're also looking at things around things that are going on in the surrounding area of your production. So whether you're in an open field, if you're in an enclosed structure, there may be less issues with some of the surrounding environment, but that's one of the things to keep in mind. Louisa talked about agricultural water. I'm gonna to touch upon that a little bit more. Soil amendments, not as key a concern based on the definitions that we're looking at for um, the produce safety rule. Again, worker hygiene and worker health, they're the people that are handling your products, so you want to make sure that you're not, they don't become a source of contamination for your product. We talked about domestic and wild animals, that a fish in your production is not considered a animal of concern because it's a controlled thing, but there may be other things like the chicken in Luisa's image that could be a concern. Um, one of the other issues is crop production. For a couple of reasons, one, uh, it's, it, it's important that you're following the label of the products that you may be using because you have a mixed use system where you're dealing with plants as well as fish or some other um, aquatic life, you need to be sure that the products you're using are not going to um, be detrimental to your aquatic animals. Uh, Cross-contamination is a key area. We'll go into a little bit more details. A lot of it has to do with good sanitization of your equipment and the tools, things that your product will be in contact with. And Traceability, so knowing where your product came from and where your product is going, that becomes an important thing, uh, especially in the unlikely event that something happens with your product. So we'll get into some of those details. So one of the things that we're looking at when we talk about aquaponics production is making sure that the plants are not in the same tank as the fish. And I know for some production systems, you, uh, they may be using fish as a mosquito control. That's not um, an ideal situation, it's not allowed, and so you need to think about having alternative mosquito control measures in place. The other thing we're looking at is making sure that there's some kind of filter system in place from the fish tanks before it gets into the system, your, your plant system. So it's primarily to remove some of the solids. This is just one example of what your system might look like. Next thing to think about is, again, will the water be in contact with the edible portion of the crop? So for this particular image where you're looking at a radish, it's probably likely, so you need to think about the quality of the water. For this system at the bottom left, there's also um, a likelihood that the water will be in contact with your crops, so you need to think about your water quality. 
for something like this, where in the upper right, where you have a RAF system, there may be less likely uh, contact depending on how your products are handled in your whole production and harvest system. Okay. So things to think about when you look at your system, whether water and water contact with your crop will be an issue. So if your water will be in contact with the edible pork, you need to think about not only a filter, but having some kind of a sanitizing system. There's lots of different options, whether it's ultraviolet light, chlorination, ozonation. Considerations in what system to use, it'll be a cost factor, not only for the initial startup, but in terms of maintaining your system. It'll also involve how complex or what kinds of technical skills you'll need in order to maintain your system. For some of you, if you're doing an organic production or leaning towards an organic production, you may have that to think about in terms of selecting what would be the most ideal uh, sanitizing system to use. So different things to think about. In addition to having some kind of system in place, you also, again, Louisa mentioned it, need to be testing for your water. So when we're looking at aquaponic system, we're looking at ideally monthly sampling and you'll be pulling it um, after the fish tanks. And if you have a filter sanitizing system, you'll be pulling it after that. So usually we're taking like a 100 ml sample of the water, sending it to the lab, and you're testing for generic E. coli. Generic E. coli is an indicator of uh, pathogens that may be problematic when it comes to foodborne illness. For some systems, you may also be looking at salmonella testing and or listeria testing. So it depends on what level of testing you're looking at and what possibly your buyer or you may be wanting to know about your water in terms of what kinds of testing you'll be doing. So one of the key things when it comes to uh, your production system is having what we call SOPs or standard operating procedures. And it's focused on preventing cross-contamination, especially between the fish, part of your operation, and your crops. So making sure you have separate tools and equipment. Making You may, depending on the scale of your operation, have separate employees. If you don't have separate employees, you want to make sure that there are protocols in place so that when they move from one production area, from the fish area to the crop area, that there's good um, hygiene and sanitation in place. Another important part when we talk about employees is making sure that they're trained and aware of policies related to hand washing and or the use of gloves, making sure there's good sanitation and clean equipment and clothing when they're moving from one area to the next. And also that they have appropriate protective clothing if they're using Certain, doing certain kinds of tasks. When we talk about harvesting and post-harvesting, some things to think about when we talk about microbial contamination is, again, preventing the water or the roots from getting in contact with the edible portion. One of the things that is popular now is living plants, so sending the product to market with roots in place. If you do something like that, you need to be thinking about the roots sitting in the water and that they will be a easy source of the water getting in touch with your product. So something to think about there. When harvesting, you want to make sure that you're avoiding water splash when you, if you're using a raft type system. Again, making sure that you're keeping the water away from the edible part of your crop. Clean tools and surfaces during the harvest as well as the packing. You want to make sure that the tools and the surfaces are not a potential point of contamination for your crop. Mainly because once it's on your crop, especially for something like a leafy green, it's very difficult to get off, even with the use of a sanitizer. If you are washing your produce, you want to make sure that you're using a sanitizer. That's a step to help reduce potential risk of um, contamination from the water. 
if you're using a dunk system where you're actually putting the product into a vat of water, the sanitizer is especially important to prevent cross-contamination with water as a vehicle for the contamination. If you have one contaminated product, it's in contact with the water, the water then picks it up and can transfer it to another product. So the sanitizer becomes an important way to prevent cross-contamination. You also have a secondary effect where it may reduce some of the, the load that may be on your product itself. The other thing to think about in terms of minimizing contamination is clean packing material. If whether you're using a clamshell to pack individual heads or um, small groups of heads or cardboard boxes or plastic, reusable plastic bins, you want to make sure that they're clean. If you're using reusable bins, make sure that you have protocols in place where they're cleaned and sanitized after each use before they're being put back into the market for your harvest. So the other thing to think about is temperature of your product once it's harvested. If you're making sure that it's in the appropriate temperature range for the specific product. The other thing to think about is if you're using some kind of a refrigeration system that you do have some monitoring and of the actual system to make sure that it's working correctly, that it's maintaining your product at the temperature that you want, and that any condensation from the refrigeration system isn't going to be a point of contamination. So traceability is an important concept to keep in mind. One, because just from watching the news, you know that produce has been implicated in outbreaks. So a label such as this would be helpful. You would have the name of your product, your company information, uh, as well as you know how much of the product is in there. Consumer handling information is a helpful tool. It's also a good way to minimize your um, risk exposure by educating the consumer about how to handle your product. And this lot number becomes an important piece of information in the unlikely event that your product is involved in some kind of a recall. It tells you the date that it was harvested and where it was harvested from. And this information should be included in any invoice that you're sending to your buyers about the product so that that number stays with the product so that that becomes part of your traceability system. You're just responsible for knowing where your product came from and who it went to. Any traceability beyond that is the responsibility of the next person. So it's one step forward and one step back. 